Hey, good morning, everyone. This is Ian Golden back with another video. And this week, we're going to talk about cue points, specifically how we can use cue points to help us prepare for sets and have amazingly awesome things happen when we're DJing live. Let's be honest with ourselves. DJing is incredibly fun. And it's also really stressful when you're doing it live. There's a lot of things going on between trying to figure out the next track, uh, people coming in and out of your booth, and just wondering if you're doing a good job. There's a lot going on. So to set yourself up for success, being a great DJ is not just what you do live, it's also what you do before you go on stage. In fact, in my experience, preparation is at least 80% of success on stage. And one of the best ways to prepare is having great cue points in your song. Let's start with the basics. The first most essential cue point everyone should have in a song is their load marker or their load cue point. Check it out. If I load this song, it loaded instantly to the beginning of this track and it's ready to play. Now, if that wasn't there, I would have had to have scrubbed forward, found the downbeat, which in this case would actually be really hard because there's no really cleanly distinct beat. So it'd be really challenging to start it at the right point. But I've put a cue point here at the beginning of my song. In Tractor, you can have a cue point that is a load marker, which means that the song will always load to that anytime you enter it into a deck. With other software, and also with CDJs, there are options where you can always load to the first cue point, or if that's not an option, you can just remember, cue point number one is where I want to start the song. This is really, really handy for songs where you might not start it at the beginning of the track. For example, this song has a long, soft intro, but you might not want to start playing there. You might want to start playing here at the beat, in which case I'd turn this into my load marker and always start there, which would be a lot better than searching through all this time right here to find that downbeat. That would take me at least 20 or 30 seconds, which is precious time when you're DJing, especially with short songs, you don't have a lot of time to make decisions. So first cue point that I think everyone should have on songs that you play regularly is a load marker or a cue point at the beginning of the beat. Or make your first cue point the place in the song where you always want to start playing from. I'd like to bring your attention to this track and notice that I've got two cue points at two different places. One at a breakdown. and another right here. Sort of like another breakdown. And what these cue points are telling me is that these are places that I can mix out of. And this is the second most basic but essential cue point that I think most DJs should have in their music. And that is, what are some places in this song that are good for mixing out? because it's really stressful and nearly impossible to remember that with every piece of music that you play. But if I pull up a track and I see, let's try this one here. Ooh, there's a place where I can mix out of this song. I have this visual reference, which takes one more thing off of my mind, allowing me to play, have fun, and focus on the important stuff like what song to play next. In this particular case, I've used these red flags. Again, this is a feature that's specific to Tractor, but all DJ software has something similar. For example, in Serato, you could make a cue point a certain color. Red is a great color. You could say, my red cue points are always the cue points that tell me I'm gonna mix out. The reason I put this here is because I've got a track after it that I know mixes really well together. Let's go ahead and listen to this mix. And I know that I should start my track right here for a good blend. 
Because these are two kind of complicated tracks, I needed to know exactly where I should start for a nice mix. Now, the reason I put these two tracks together is not by circumstance. I've actually designed them to go well together. And I've used a system that I've called vignettes, which I taught you in the last video. If you didn't watch that one, I recommend clicking the link below. In this case, I know that this song comes first, this song comes second, and I know that I should start playing it either right here or right here. Let's review. First, always a good idea to have a cue point at the beginning of the song or somewhere where you first want to start playing that song. Next, good idea to have cue point or cue points at different parts of the song that are good for mixing out. Third, really important to have a loop somewhere at the end of the song or at your mix out point that's a good solid loop that you've listened to in advance. And this can be saved as a cue point. In this case, I've got a very complicated track that's got some weird rhythmic material. It's not on grid. It's, in other words, it doesn't have a defined um, meter. But I found a place where it did have a consistent beat and I could figure out a nice loop. So I figured out that loop in advance and saved it as a cue point here. And you'll notice that right before the loop, I've got my mix out cue marker saying, start mixing out here and set a loop here. Now it's really easy if I'm doing this mix live. And the reason I did this was because without it, there's no way I would be able to beat match out of this track that has random drum beats seamlessly. But using these two techniques, I have a really, really clean mix. Here I can go into a track that is on the grid and make the two work together beautifully. So I start my track, get it synced up, and start playing on the downbeat. I activated my loop or got it running and it just automatically started running because I went through it. And now I've got this nice tabla in the background which keeps the energy and the vibe of that track going into my next mix. And you'll find that not all loops are equal. In fact, if you set a loop on the fly, sometimes it'll work great, but rarely will it work perfectly. And I find it's really helpful to have a few aces up my sleeve with really perfect loops set at the end of tracks that are ready to go so I can just hit activate and they start running automatically without me thinking about it. In this case, I just have to think about hitting play at the right point. I don't have to worry about setting the perfect loop. Let me give you an example of how this works for tracks that you haven't planned. In both of these cases, these tracks were planned to be played together. So the system makes sense. But having these cue points in place will also help you a lot when you don't have mixes planned. Here's a track that I like a lot, but it's also really, really short. It's only three minutes um, and it goes really fast. So what I've got here are two cue point options. Obviously I have a load marker. It started at the beginning. I've got a breakdown marked here. So I know that that's there. And then I've got my first mix out option here at the chorus. And then I've got another mix out option marked, which looks like to be at the outro. And here's really tricky. The outro of this track is super short really not designed to be helpful to DJs. If you did a super fast mix that was only those 16 counts, it would work. But if you want to do anything longer, it's not going to happen because the thing expired really fast. For that reason, I set a little loop here so that the outro would continue going and I could continue to loop. Now, this is really helpful because if I pull up this track and I'm about midway through, trying to figure out what song to play next, I've only got a minute and 36 seconds to do it. And if I miss my mix out points, I'm screwed. Not screwed, you know, the song might end and I could play another song. 
it's not the end of the world, but I'm not gonna do a seamless transition with another song that I pick randomly. And I do a lot of that. Although I plan some little mixes like these vignettes, I do a lot of improvisational mixing. And in improvisational mixing, you need to have a good sense of where your mix out points are. In this case, let's say I pulled up a random track by Fisher Spooner. Normally I would not play these two together, but because I've got the mix out point and this loop, it should all work pretty well. Did a little echo delay trick there to get out of that. But you can see with these two cue points, my mix out and my loop, I have a lot more time to get out of this track. And even if I don't find a song in time, I could just let this loop run for a while and it gives me a chance to mix just about anything else in because the loop that I've chosen has almost no musical information. So I could drop pretty much any song over it and while it might not be perfect, it'll work rhythmically. Now, let's get a little bit more advanced with our cue points. And in this section, I'm gonna to go to one of your questions, which was about using cue points and loops together. And I think this was a really great question and a great suggestion because a lot of people don't think about using loops as cue points. And you can, and it can be really creative. I did this in particular on one of my performance videos where I remixed Ozzy Osbourne way back in 2010 when I still had some pretty crazy hair. So that's pretty simple, along with having some <laughs> pretty epic hair there. I'm using a relatively simple technique where we are uh, using cue points as loops. And the reason is that the loop, I'm using short loops that can repeat. I'll hit it as a cue point, but then it continues to play so I don't have to keep playing the cue point. Let's pull up that track itself and I'll show you what I mean. Okay, so you've got, uh, we're gonna use the MIDI Fighter 3D here. We've got eight cue points. I, I, I. And then we've got some loops. I, 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 I. And the idea here is that the loops keep repeating, but I can play them in different ways. The idea here is that I can play the loops, but keep the button held down and it'll keep repeating in time. And this is really helpful because it creates interesting rhythms that I couldn't necessarily do with my fingers. Now, let's see what that sounds like over this track. And just for fun, I went ahead and I mapped some effects Let's try to put that over a beat and see what it sounds like. And just for fun, I also mapped the MIDI Fighter's um, motion controls to some effects to spice up these loops a little bit. And that's why I like loops as cue points, because I can hit the cue point and it's just gonna keep looping and repeating in interesting ways, making that note sound again and again and again. Let's see how it sounds.
cool. That's kind of fun. Not bad for something that I pulled together this morning. So there you have it, folks, some creative ways and some basic ways that you can use cue points to set yourself up for success, either in improvisational mixing, planned vignettes, or improvisational jam time. If you like this video, we would love your support. Please visit us on the web at djtechtools.com where we have an amazing store full of incredible gear like the MIDI Fighter 3D for sale. And it's through those sales that we support and pay for videos like these. So I hope you'll support us in the store. We're a small team of DJs that own the store and every single one of your dollars goes back into the community of DJs. Thank you very much and we'll see you next week.